everybody and welcome along to our colour pencil donut class. So this is one that I did in a previous class um, right back at the beginning of lockdown number one. Seems forever ago, doesn't it? Way back in March or April time, I've run this class before. So that's <laughs> the one that I did then. I'm going to try and do as good tonight. But I think that, that came out pretty well. Um, so the paper first. You can use any paper with coloured pencils, but for this, I like to use Bristol board. It's called board, but it is paper. Let me just grab my pad. So I sell this on my website as well. Fabriano is the brand that I'm using, but it's a smooth textured paper. So it means when you're putting your pencil marks and your colours on, particularly for that lovely smooth crisp icing on the top, you don't necessarily want the texture of the paper showing through. So using a smooth paper gives you that head start, but you could be using normal cartridge paper. Doesn't matter, just means that your image will have a bit more texture to it than mine. Um, so that's the paper and here's the pencils. Okay, so I've got, um, I did, I think there was a list. Someone's just joined. I think she lost signal. Is that leave a lady? Maybe she lost signal. Um, I've, I have added another colour um, since I sent the list out. So I don't know if you have it, but it's um, burnt ochre. It's another orangey, like the terracotta. The reason I did that was my terracotta, I'm using different ranges of pencils here. So most of them are Faber-Castell Polychromos, um, but I've also got a set of Castle, which by the way, if you're looking to get some new pencils, Castle are a really good, affordable brand, for excellent quality. This one. Uh, Castle. Yeah. Castle. Yeah. They're good. Um, I bought, I'll show you. I think for about yeah. 40 pounds. The polychromos are really expensive. Okay, I've had them years. Um, this is a set of castle that I bought. Mm -hmm. and this huge set was about 40 pounds. Look at all those beautiful colours. Isn't it lovely? Have you got pencil envy? <laughs> so, the only difference with the with them sometimes the colour on the end doesn't match the colour in the nib. I've noticed on some of them, but that's a small price to pay for a really good quality pencil. Yeah. Uh, somehow I have, um, and I've got a grey, which is Payne's grey. I'm going to use. The paint's great for the shadow areas. I've also pulled out a lighter grey. I'm not sure whether I'm going to use it or not. It's um, it's a warm grey five, if you're interested in the name of the grey. And then three pinks. The flesh tone, which we'll start with. Rose and carmine. Rose is that lovely sugary spice colour. And then the carmine allows us to get the darker pinks within the top of the donut. I've got cream, white, and then whatever colours you want for the sprinkles on the top. And today I've chose these. So I've got a yellow, an orange, a pale blue and a green. But you can sprinkle your donut with whatever colours you like. And a pencil. You'll notice I haven't started. My page is blank. So if you've sketched your donut out already, you can just sit back and relax. Um, it's quite a simple form to create. So I'm going to keep that reference picture there so that you can all keep it in shot, although I did send it out earlier. And if I can, no, I don't think that will fit in shot. That's the one I did before, but we can refer back to it from time to time. So let's start our sketch and I want you to be really loose. Now I'm going to draw my lines quite strong using a HB pencil or a B pencil, use a hard pencil rather than a soft. You don't want the graphite getting into your colour pencil work. You could sketch it in colour pencil, but I prefer to use graphite just for that initial sketching stage. So keep your sketch nice and light, guys, okay? I just say for camera purposes, I'm gonna press a bit harder. So I'm starting over on the right hand edge, just coming up, it's not perfectly, round there were lumps and bumps and this is a4 i'm gonna go 
pretty good size. And you can see when I'm sketching, some of my lines, I don't just do one solid line. I just sketch the shapes as I see them. Coming round, really looking at the top of the donut at the moment. Getting some of that drippy icing, lovely pink, gorgeous icing. And it really doesn't matter, guys, if your drawing's not perfect. It's your donut. Maybe you you squashed it. <laughs> so I'm just coming around the bite mark now here. And someone's had a big chunk out of our donut, which is really nice. Why I love this reference photo, because it allows us to work on some texture in the middle. And then we've got our hole in the middle. Let's have a look where that bite is. Just in from the bite is where that circle in the middle appears. So we'll pop that in. Okay. I'm just looking back at my drawing now. I'm just observing a few things. The donut is a bit wider this side and should be narrow there. So I'm just going to bring my line in a bit. It's the joy. This is another reason why you should sketch with graphite pencil because you can erase it, whereas color pencil doesn't like being erased. So I'm just changing the shape of that back edge. Just to bring it in a little bit closer. And now we can come down the side of our donut to that lovely golden donut just comes down a little bit from the icing and the round you know when donuts donuts are fried um i'm sure you've all been watching watched bake off before when they've done donuts they fry it one side and then they flip it over and fry the other and you have this lovely cream edge running through the middle so that's the line i'm drawing now that cream edge and then we'll come down. Now look here, it comes in and down. Comes in a bit, and then down. And then we can draw the bottom segment of our golden donut. And come up the edge there. Whoops. Let me just make that a bit stronger for the camera. The lights are quite bright in my studio, so I do need to, can you see that? Okay, and they're in for the bite. We just come in a little bit from that edge and start creating the left hand side of the bite, which we can only see a little bit of. And then I'm going to come back over the other side, get the bottom of our donut at the side. There's only a little bit of the side of that cream going around the middle. And then we come into our bite, our torn bits of dough. And make your line a bit jagged. It's not going to be a straight line. It's been torn or bitten with a big bite out of it. So it's not going to be a smooth straight line. It's going to be a little bit jagged. I'm not going to draw any of the texture. We're going to save that for our colour pencil work. I'm just going to move my icing over a little bit further as well. There we go. It's quite a simple sketch. Now the next bit's going to take a little bit of time and we're all just going to hum to ourselves as we do it. We need to draw the sprinkles. <laughs> okay, we need to draw them otherwise we'll get carried away with our pink and we need to reserve the white paper where the sprinkles are. So they're just different shapes and sizes. Well they're all pretty much the same shape these little lozenge shapes, little tubes of hundreds and thousands on the top of the donut. It's up to you how many you put, put some next to each other, some more spread apart. I did them very tiny last time. I'm gonna make them a little bit bigger than I did. And some of them are hanging off the edge. So we want to include some that are raised up above the surface of the edge of the donut as well. You've got the reference picture there. If you really want to, you can copy every single sprinkle. 
But I suggest you just do, go freestyle. Just start plonking them on. You'll notice some are big, some are more like circles where they're broken. Got some hanging on the cliff edge here just before they spill down the center of the donut. Now you should draw these really lightly. Ignore the fact that I'm pressing quite firmly on my pencil. As I say, that is for your purposes, not mine. If I was drawing this for myself, I would be drawing very lightly. Lots of lovely sprinkles, really pretty colours that you can have fun with when we get towards the end of our donut. Cluster some together and spread others apart, just keep it random. Colour pencil these days, it used to be frowned upon in the art world, but um, I think we've been helped with colour pencil. I don't know if anyone was watching Portrait Artist of the Year, um, the series that's just ended. The guy that won overall um, used colour pencil in a really unique way, I have to say. He was fabulous. And it's great to see a less traditional, shall we say, medium winning something like that. It just gives it more kudos. OK, I'm going to have some sprinkles coming across that centre as well. A couple hanging on the edge, coming over the edge. I've recently, I don't, oh, here, look, here's my donut. I've had it printed on a mug. Do not disturb for my studio. <laughs> there we go. You can have some crossing over each other as well. So have one there and just a little bit showing behind. Couple more. As if we had painted all this pink with our pencils or coloured in with our pencils, all of the pink first, we would struggle to get the colours to really pop out. So we have to draw them on to preserve that area of the paper. So we keep it white when we're, we're putting our pink on so that they'll really pop out these colours. And not get lost. I'm leaving some big areas without any sprinkles as well. Now what we're aiming to do once we start using our colour pencils is try and keep our drawing really smooth So once we start on the coloured segments, we'll talk about how much pressure you're putting on your pencils to get the different strengths of colour and also to help protect the paper and not allow it to get shiny. I think that's enough sprinkles for mine. I'm going to eat my iced biscuit. Well, I'll give you a few moments to finish. Where you have drawn some hanging over the edge, just erase that edge line. I've got a little, little eraser here somewhere, a tiny one, which is good for those sort of things. This is called a Tombow Mono Eraser. If you're interested, you can get them on good old Amazon. It's just a nice narrow eraser. 
allows you but it's a good tool for lots of things anyone that's done any of my pencil classes like the eye class or the cat um, you'll see me use a mono eraser in those really good for getting the, uh, the look of human hair animal hair bringing highlights through okay now my donut is sketched and you can see how many sprinkles I've put on it. I'm just going to use my eraser to go over the top. So if your pencil looks a bit dark, just lighten it. Make sure you can still see it. I'm just gliding my eraser over the top just to take some of the graphite off. So it's not going to look unsightly when I start colouring in. Here's my big brush. Let's get rid of the crumbs. Okay. <clears throat> So the first bit we're going to colour in is the donut section itself. I've just realised I've, I've erased my icing completely. Let me just pop that back in. <laughs> I was a bit too mad. We're going to start on the dough of the donuts. And I want you to start with um, raw umber. Now, if you're just going by eye on the colour and you haven't got the names on your pencils, it's this very light brown. Umber is sort of a natural brown, a sort of yellowy tinge to it. And I mentioned about the texture. We want smoothness to the surface of our donut. I'm just going to move that up a little bit so I'll get a good position with my hand. And I want you to shade really gently. No hard pressure coming. For, I don't want you scribbling down. Really hold that pencil lightly. Hold it way back up the pencil, not down here. So you're not putting too much pressure. The minute your hand goes up here, you're going to be tending to put too much pressure on your pencil. So hold it back midway. And we're just going to shade gently and lightly. And you see this has got a yellowy tinge to it once I get a bit more colour on. And using a circular motion, avoiding the cream bit that we spoke about in the middle of the donut. So coming up to the icing, nice circular motion, very light. With pencil drawing, any pencil drawing, whether it be graphite or colour pencils, the minute you start putting pressure on your pencil, what's happening is you're going to get a shine. Have you ever done a pencil drawing and it's gone shiny, the dark areas where you're pressed hard and you get this glare? The reason that happens is because you have squashed the fibres of the paper and instead of the natural bounciness of the paper, you have squashed them together, the particles, so that they're dead flat and light reflects off of them. That's why you get that horrible, you, you can't get rid of it. Once you've done it, you may have been in that situation and you're trying to get rid of that shine and you can't. It's because you've squashed the paper. So nice and light. The best way to get stronger colours is to build up layers and go over it again. So if you go over that same patch again, it'll get darker each layer that you put on. So leaving this band round the middle, I'm going to come below centre point and carry on with that circular motion this raw umber into the donut. You can cover it quite quickly. Don't let your pencil start doing these big loops. Keep it quite tight and keep it moving. The other benefit of going lightly is you're less likely to see pencil marks. You don't want to see the pencil marks if you can help it. So, I'm also holding the pencil, as you notice, on its side. So I'm using not the tip of the pencil, 
at the side of that lead there. Another benefit of colour pencil work or any pencil work is you don't need much, do you? You need a set of pencils, a bit of paper, no mess. Just adjusting that line that I drew. I want that to have a straighter edge. There we go. So that's our first base. Um, and we are going to be layering our pencils tonight, creating rich, richer and richer colours as we go. You notice my paper's taped down to a ball. That's really just to keep it still. And to make sure if you are leaning on a board that it's a smooth board. <laughs> Again, otherwise you're going to, going to pick up the textures of the grain of the board underneath, which is a nightmare. So this doesn't look very donutty. It's a bit boring, but we've given it that nice undercoat. And now we're going to start bringing the orange tones through. So first of all, though, I want you to pick up your cream. If you've got if you haven't got cream, use white. And I'm going to take the cream all over quite quickly. A little bit more pressure on the cream because we're using it to help push all those pencil marks into the donut and also add some cream pencil to this middle section. That line runs around the side of our donut. Still a circular motion. You can afford to go a bit wider with your circles. We're only using cream. It's not going to show. And this is also, we're putting colour down. We're smoothing out the marks that we've made. And it's called burnishing, pushing colours together. And we'll do this a few times. OK. Let's get some more orangey colours in. So I want you to go to your terracotta as I say, my terracotta is really quite a strong orange, so I might, I'll see how it goes, I might use my burnt ochre. I'm going to start with the terracotta. In the bottom section, starting at the bottom of the donut, and using that same light pressure over the top of our raw umber. So you can blend pencils, colour pencils, over each other. And if you use this on its own, this is where I was trying out my, my colours earlier. If you use that terracotta on its own, look how orange it is, compared to putting it over, where's my raw umber? When you layer it over another colour, it changes it completely completely different colours. So if you just went with terracotta straight off, your donut would be far too orange. And it's just practice and getting used to using your colour pencils where you'll think about what colours you want to put underneath. Now we're getting more of a donut colour. So this one is a castle that I'm putting over the top of my polychromos. And up to the top. This time I'm going to start next to the icing. And I'm going to put now, my hand has come down the pencil because I want a bit more pressure around the edge of the icing. The icing itself is cast in a shadow on the donut. So just taking that around that jagged edge of the icing first. And then we're going to blend into that and this guy lose that line. So go to the line and start shading down 
the donut. Coming away from that line. So we've put the shadow in and now we're just softening our mark. I don't like the shape of the bottom of my donut. I'm just going to change that a second, guys. There we go. Back to the terracotta. Remember to leave that cream. Okay, I'm going to move to this brown ochre that I mentioned earlier. I just feel we need a little bit more yellow coming through the top half of the donut. You could also use a yellow or a normal yellow ochre. I just want a bit more of that golden colour coming through. So I'm going to go over the near the near the um, cream section with this ochre, just to give it a bit more of a goldeny glow. Actually, I think the yellow might be better. Just a hint. That's better. Much better. And again, because this yellow is going over the top of other colours, it doesn't look as yellow as when I tested it earlier here. work it in back to the cream once you've got your yellow on and now we're going to burnish again just large circles of the cream pushing the colors together now you can also get depends on the pencils you're using polychromos don't don't really like um colorless blenders um, but more wax based pencils do and you can buy colorless blenders to do this um, but to be honest I'm, I'm I usually use just a light color either white or cream or sometimes a light gray depends what the colors are that I'm blending together When we get closer to the end and we bring some shadows under, it'll really start popping off the page. Just give you a moment on that. There's also a little bit over the other side, which I've forgotten. So I'm just going to do the same, just over the edge. On the right hand side, starting with that raw umber, just a little bit of the side of the donut, just peeking through there, and the terracotta. Blend it with your cream or your white. It's not gonna dramatically change the color at all. It's just gonna help get that nice smooth finish. When you're ready, we're going to come to the shadow or the really dark bit. The, the donut does have a slight curve in. I tried to take my finger off today. Look, it's poorly plaster on. Here, this is the bit I'm referring to on the donut. Under here, under the cream, it's much darker. So this is where we're going to take our brown. 
And we're going to come into that crease, that slight indentation over the top of the other colours, not on the cream, over the colours. Very tight circles. Coming around. We've got to, we're trying to interpret the way light is hitting this donut. And we've not spoken about light yet. So once we've done this bit, we'll just have a chat about the light source. Just coming up nice and gently. Don't create a, create a straight line. It's not a straight line. It's an organic thing. And work in the brown pencil away from the line, just like we did at the top where the icing is. Just very, very gently shading the brown down from that line. Just so we get that sort of ombre effect to our colour. I'm desperate to put the shadow in, but we're not going to do that yet. I want to put the shadow in. I'm just going to change my screen a little bit. And you'll be pleased to know we're going to move on to the pink. Just shrink my picture of me back a little bit so we can see more of what's going on on the table and less of me. I'm just going to talk about the light and how the light is hitting the donut because it's important now. From now, particularly, we're going to come on to do the top and the pink. So the light source is coming from top right, from over here. So our light source is coming from this direction. The light's hitting here. So if you look at the reference picture, the pinks are light this side until the donut tips over and goes down the center. And then we've got this darker pink section. Then again, that light is hitting this side, the raised side, the other side of the hole in the middle. And again, this side of the icing is dark. And taking your attention and looking at those things are what's gonna make it look realistic. So if I bring my Previous one back, you can see how I've kept, kept it light here and light around this section and then really developed the pinks nice and dark around these sides that are creating a shadow. So we need to protect some of the paper, not protect, preserve some of the paper. We need to keep a few areas white. We're not actually going to put any pink on at all just here and a little bit here. So let's start with our first pink and it's not the brightest pink. This is my um, medium flesh pink, okay? So it's not candy pink. It's more like our hand, my palm of my hand. Again, it's important that you use a very light stroke when you're rendering the pink and we've got to dodge we've got to dodge the sprinkles so holding that pencil nice and loose right back at the end circular motions very lightly this is the dark side but we're going to increase the intensity of the color once we've got this first layer of pink on and doing a circular motion allows you even with a smooth paper to get into the tooth even a smooth paper does have a tooth to it, 
which is what the pigments are holding on to. So tight circles will keep it looking flat rather than shading side to side where you're going to see your lines. So hold that pencil nice and loose. And we're going to move at a fair pace across our donut, avoiding the circles, avoiding the sprinkles. It's a bit of a challenge, avoiding the sprinkles. And you may be tempted to control your pencil to bring your hand closer to the nib. I don't mind if you do, but don't come right down. Try and stay as far back as you can where you feel you've got control, but you're not gonna add that pressure. Round and round we go. Try to get close up to the edge of the sprinkle. If there's some bits that you miss, it doesn't matter. You've got a chance to come back and give it another layer, remember? So we will catch it all. A very light pink to start with. And this is also going to be the lighter colour of the pinks that are in the highlight. So other than blending it with our cream or white, we're not going to add any more colour to the lighter sections. Where's the hole gone? Oh, here. You couldn't see my line there. Nice and smoothly. It's very relaxing. I should play some music. Now the area that we're going to keep white is here, where the, where the light is hitting this section. I'm just going to draw a little line there. And over here, I'm going to leave a white section around there. Everything else will be coloured in. If it's comfortable for you, when you get to certain points, just spin your paper around, find a comfortable angle. Because we're doing circles, doesn't matter. The main thing is that you keep it soft. And coming towards that light section here. Now keeping that white there, even though if you look closely at the reference picture, it isn't white, it will make it look shiny in our drawing. That's why we're keeping that section of white. It's the real highlight on that edge of the donut. I don't want straight lines around it. To just make some kind of organic shape where that highlight's gonna be.
See if you can try and keep your color even at this stage. That's your challenge. This looks more like the colour of the iced biscuit that I ate earlier. So I've just come round the other side and then I'm going to join up in the middle. And just for a little bit of useless information, did anyone see Landscape Artist last night? Landscape Artist of the Year. It's by Sky Arts, the same people that do portrait artists. And the first one of the series was last night. And um, that was really good. Next week's episode was the one that I attended as a wild card. I've been a few times now. Never managed to get in a pod yet. Although when I see some of the work that they choose to get through, it makes my mind boggle as to why. <laughs> but it's good fun going along. So I'll see if I make it to the screen as a wild card. They do film and have a little interview with you whilst you're painting. Um, the first year I went, I made it to screen a little bit. Last year, not at all, when I was in Newcastle. I need to pull my finger out and get an entry in for this year. It was a bit different this time, though, because there was no public allowed in, because we filmed it in the summer, um, in the middle of um, relaxed lockdown. So no public was allowed to, to mingle with us all, which it felt very different. It's nice to have people milling around. Here's my highlight section. I just want to keep this white here. Just finishing off around the edge, the hole in the middle of the donut. And it doesn't look very much at this stage. Now I'm going to get my other two pinks at the ready and we're going to be switching between the three pinks as we build up the values of our donut. I'll just give you a bit longer to finish off filling in the first layer of your icing. This will probably take us just over the two hours.
getting good at remembering to hit record, which is great. <laughs> Otherwise, I end up having to redo the painting again, which is not good. OK, so we're going to use our rose next, which is the more vibrant pink and a combination of rose and carmine. So these are the colours, this brighter pink and this more ready pink, carmine. Now it looks really strong, but remember we're layering it over the other pink, so it's not going to come out this colour. And we're going to start intensifying the pink, particularly on the left hand side of this bit and the left hand side of this curved bit as it goes into the donut. So here we go, circular motions again, but put in a bit more pressure on your pencil. Don't scribble hard, I'm still holding the pencil quite a way back. And as you come around the sprinkles, I'll allow you to put a bit more pressure because every single little sprinkle is, is a form on its own and it's creating its own little shadow. So you can just go around the edge and remember the light source is coming this way. So you just want to get the shadow on the back, on the right hand side of your sprinkles. So you can go in a little bit more pressure to get that pink showing stronger and then fill in around it. Just a bit more pressure than you did with your first layer. Starting to get this pink to pop. So it's such a relaxing colouring pencils. I don't know. Watercolours, I'd say slightly less relaxing because of the speed generally that you have to work with it but pencils you can just sit there and while away the hours one of my um students did a pheasant with another it was another class that she attended with another artist um i'll, I'll let her off <laughs> and um I think she spent about 20 hours on it, but it was superb. But they are slower. So when I do my pet portraits, which I know some of you will have seen, um, I do them in pastels. And pastels is a faster medium, but it allows you to achieve, um, you know, all the detail that you need. And I think for pet portraits, it gives you a softer finish. For me, I prefer pastels for pets. I have done some portraits in colour pencil um, but yeah I do prefer pastels for those I think it just suits doing fur you get that look of fur a lot easier with a pastel than a colour pencil it's more hard work with colour pencil so hats off to those colour pencil artists that do the dog portraits in those they do take longer so really darkening, just look for the point where it gets lighter, whereas we come across the donut over this side, it's going to remain light. What we'll do actually, we'll do up to here. So if you come up to the back of the circle and from the bite to there and, and we'll start building our colours so it's less boring for you. And you can see it progress in sections. So remember, come around those sprinkles with a bit firmer pressure. Mainly, and we're gonna add some more shadow with our gray, with our Payne's gray, once we get more of the pink on. But let's get this stronger pink go and then just keep keep that pencil mark tight now look how keep your eye on that reference photo over this front side there's a lighter patch here so I'm going to avoid that as we come towards the bite I think where the teeth have gone in they've flattened the icing and they've pulled it over so it's catching the light. It's all observation, just really looking properly 
keep your eye. You can see how close to my work I've got the iPad here, not just for your benefit. When I'm working on portraits and, and other works where I'm working from a reference photo, I always have, if I'm at the easel, I'll have it taped on the top of the easel so that your eyes never having to travel too far. You can just flick your eye backwards and forwards and let it tell your hand where you want that color to go. Now, I've drawn this shape a bit different to the photo reference, but it doesn't matter. You get the gist of it. This section here coming towards the hole near to the bite is still quite a strong pink. And it's only round here on this side that it's really light. Come around those sprinkles. Round here, just level with the middle of that circle is where you see it getting lighter. And all you're going to do is adjust the pressure on your pencil when you want it darker, just push a little bit, not too hard though, remember, you're better to come back with another layer than push too hard. Now we're starting to get some color on the screen. I can see, I'm looking at my big screen in front of me. I can see the pink on camera, that's good. So coming up, just come around this, where did I say we'd go to? About here, just level with the, um, level with the hole, we'll go to here. We've got a natural break. Right over on the right hand side is where we've got the strongest pink, the deepest pinks. So I'm going over this section again. Layering. Intensifying that colour without overworking it pressure wise. And you should start to see any white paper disappearing as we keep going and layering. So we're starting to get a sense of form as we've got light areas and dark starts to give it undulations. So we're going to intensify that now by going to our deeper red, the carmine. It's called pink carmine, but it's closer to a red. If I just put a swatch of this down, you'll see what it looks like in its natural form. So this is the, let me get another piece of paper. Oh. So this was the base pink the flesh, this was my rose, and then this is the, oops, <laughs> this one's the carmine, very red, but we're going to use it as a layer, so over the dark side to the dark side, circles again, now as I come around doing my circles with the dark pink carmine, there's places where I'm going to skip Really looking hard at that reference photo, there's highlights even in the shadow area. So just here, I'm going to leave some of those other layers of pink showing. So we get that sense of the shape and the way that light's playing on the surface. Now it's starting to look edible.
Now, despite the fact that this side of the icin is in shadow, some reason, for some reason, there is a highlight around the edge of the icin as it tips over the side. So I'm not going to come right down to the edge. Coming around where those teeth marks have gone in. Really emphasizing the change in tone here between the lighter pink as that donut dipping down into the cavern. And here, a bit darker. Keep that motion of the pencil circular. Now I'm easing up my pressure. I want some of this carmine color as we come across towards that hole in the middle, but I don't want it so intense. So I'm softening up, lighter touch. So we're getting a different pink. And then as I come back across the donut to this shadow side, I'm pushing harder. You should be able to see the variation. It'd be easier to see on your own work the, the um, changes in strength of colour. You see there's, there are some light areas here, darks in the middle. So let's keep going up this edge. Up level. There's a highlight on the donut that I missed actually here. It doesn't matter. Just here in the photo is a really light section. But to make that work, if I come the other side, can you see in this edge, there's a kind of V shape just sitting there. So if I bring the dark carmine in the other side to create that V shape, we can still capture a bit of a highlight. And again, another highlight the other side to create that kind of crease in the icing. There we go. Just here. But you don't want it to look too solid, so work away from it like we did with the shadow on the edge of the donut. Shade away from that crease. Just smoothing out. Coming around those sprinkles. Okay. So just before we finish this section here, I'm just going to use my carmine again just like really lightly this time, really lightly, just beside the hole at the edge of the ice in there. Just another change in pink as it comes towards that highlight. And we'll follow around the back in a, in a little while, but just for now, that's the point I want to finish. I'm gonna switch back to my rose. And I'm going to take the rose back over the carmine in these lighter segments. Again, every time you layer a pencil, you're removing marks, pencil marks, changing the colour slightly, but more about blending and creating that smooth surface. We're going to do texture in a little while when we come round to the bitten side of the donut. And the way you show texture is showing the changes, the sudden changes in darks to lights. On a shiny surface, there aren't any such sudden 
uh, sudden changes. It's a much softer surface that we're creating. That looks delicious. Should we put our sprinkles on? Yeah. I'm cheating a bit. Last time I did this class, we did it all, all the pinks and then the sprinkles. I want some sprinkles. So we feel like we're getting somewhere. So just randomly choose your colours. Now, remember, every sprinkle is a form in itself. So if you've got a really sharp pencil, you can show dark and light to the sprinkle itself and leave a lighter colour. So I'm going to pick a blue one. I'm going to push fairly hard on the left hand edge of my sprinkle and then ease up as I shade across and leave in one side white. So there's a stripe. Then I'm going to creep around the back and just bring that blue. So the stripe is just in on the right hand side of the sprinkle. You could just colour them all in flat, but it will give you a better look. And I also want you to have your Payne's Grey. So your colours for your sprinkle and your Payne's Grey, your dark grey, and you're going to emphasise the shadow with the grey. Keep it really tiny and close to the sprinkle. And it suddenly gives it that sense of form that it is actually sitting on top of the donut. I'm not sure I like this blue. I might get a different one. Um, no. Aha, uh -huh. maybe that one. It's a bit light for camera, so I'm going to go for this more turquoisey one. But whatever colour you want to use, really doesn't matter. That's better, isn't it? That shows up better. I'm going to pick off this one on the side, hanging off the edge. Obviously, the one hanging off the edge hasn't got a shadow, this side of it. But I'm still keeping the highlight along the left-hand side. I'll pop this one in. Try and retain a little bit of the white or cream paper in Ellen's case, showing through. <laughs> so firm pressure on the dark side and then ease up, leave a bit of the paper showing and then bring it the other side. Just give it that sense of form, each tiny little fragment and then your grey really finely sharp keep your pencil right on the tip right close to the sprinkle to give it that little shadow I'm going to have some orange ones now the ones that you decide to keep white if you want to keep some sprinkles white you're just going to bring your grey to create the shadow and nothing more. The orange ones don't show up so much, but there are definitely orange ones on the reference photo. And remember your shadows. Also going to help them stand out. Let's have some yellow. And a few green so it doesn't matter you can do each of the one the colors first and then go back with the gray or you can do each one at a time putting the gray in i'm opting for putting all the colors in and then going back over with the gray and 
ללמוד. So much fun. Right, I didn't get any purple. I'm going to add some purple too. Why not? I've got purple here. Let's go to my other pot. To find a purple. So dark one side, then ease up the pressure. Leave a little bit of white if you can. The thing that really makes them pop out is that tiny, tiny reference to a shadow. So the white ones, I'm just going to take the shadow round and then I'm very softly, very softly indeed using my Payne's Grey just to put a little bit of shading on the white ones. So shadow and then very, very gently, just a little bit of grey. Another yellow. And that grey on the edge. How much fun can you have? on a Thursday evening with your colour pencils. Pop another one over here, purple. Okay, now I'm going to go back with my carmine pink and just work around that grey, the shadow, because I don't want grey on the donut. I'm now covering the grey with the carmine. It's all tiny detail, but it will make a difference just to tone down the grey. We want the grey. It gives us the dark. It gives us that shadow. Just tone it down with your dark pink. Oops, I've missed off these ones right on the edge. Good, grey. Where's my grey gone? Oh, there it is. Where um, you've got some sprinkles in the lighter section, go over the grey with your base pink, the first pink you used. Oh, 
Вот вот. Now isn't that starting to look delicious? I'm going to use my white next to go over this section and just render, burnish all those colours together. Obviously avoiding the sprinkles. We're not burnishing the sprinkles, but I just want to pull all these pinks together by bringing the white this time instead of the cream. Cream's got a bit of yellow in it, which is why I'm not using the cream. It works good on the sponge, on the donut, on the dough, but not on the icing. So I'm using the white just to go over and push all those colours together. Give us that nice, silky, shiny look. The white can bring the colour a bit lighter, but you'll never get white to really show up against a dark colour, not in colour pencils. The only way to be sure of white is to leave the colour of the paper. You see, feel how smooth that makes it look. Whilst we've got the white, carry on and go over the white segments that we left for the highlights. So I'm going over the pink that's nearby and spreading that over those highlight areas of the donut as well. Whilst we've got it out, we'll do that. It stopped recording then. So, so we're going down the groove as the icing heads towards that hole in the middle of the donut with our rose. And this really going to give it that sense of form. Keeping the left, the right hand side, sorry, nice and light. All we're going to do on that side is render it with the white and add a few bits of rose around the extremities. So here over on this edge, you can see it's a little bit darker. Working around your pencil drawing outline and then fading, lifting up your pencil, not pressing so hard as you come in. So it's got a nice strong pink against the paper. Up onto the point and then shade it out, coming in and then leaving the colour of our first layer. It will just give it that nice edge next to the paper itself. Okay, so back to the centre. A little bit more pressure to get that colour strong. So we come around to join up with where we left off the other side. This section's lighter. It's around that midpoint where you've got the dark and then it starts getting lighter around this section. And think of that hole itself as it tips the curve of the donut it's around here, almost a middle line where you want your darker pinks to be. go. This cluster here right at the back is kind of a mid pink I would say. It's not the darkest but it definitely needs the rose. Coming around that highlight 
and towards the back of the donut. Remember, if you want to bring your pink, your rose, just under each sprinkle, you can do that too. We're going to add grey to it, just like we did the other side. Even in that lighter section, I'm going to take the rose just under the sprinkles. It grounds them, so they're not just floating about on top of the donut, they're actually attached to it and casting a shadow shows that they are on the surface, not just colours within the donut, that they are raised bumps on the donut. If we coloured them all in flat, they would just look flat. So adding these shadows makes them look bumpy, doesn't it? It gives them that shape, that form. I think you were also busy concentrating on your donuts. You probably didn't even see that I've gone. <laughs> Now here and there in this light section, I can see some darker tones, just like over this side, I left some light tones showing. This side, I'm just gonna bring a few areas of the rose pink, just a myriad, just let your pencil dance around, create some random patterns on the surface of the donut. It's just showing the gentle undulations in the ice in itself. A few more. There's one here again where the tooth mark. Remember, over this side, we said the tooth mark had left some highlights. This side, where the tooth mark has dragged the icing down, it's left a shadow because it's pulled it into the shadow away from the light. Okay, just a bit more around this section at the back. You may find by the time that we have to, to go later that you want to add some more colour. You might have areas that you want to finish off. By doing these sections, you know it gives you the, the tools to do that once we, once we finish tonight may want to make your pink stronger in places. So I'm following the back now. We've got this little corner section to finish off with the rose again over the top. It's coming towards the shadow side, across this corner. So keeping this area here fairly light and then just a bit more pressure over the back side. Coming up to join where we left off, where over this top left is very dark again. Very dark, coming in towards those sprinkles in the middle. Over to that corner where the donut's sloping away from the light. I'm going to go hunting one of these down tomorrow, I think. <laughs> Even if it's a plain donut. I'd prefer one with pink icing. So this lovely highlight that we've got here is really helping with that curve. Carmine next, the same order as before. And I'm going to... If you, if you struggle to see the dark sides, I've not mentioned this yet, I usually do. If you can't see the changing colours, half close your eyes when you're looking at it, squint as you look at the reference photo. And the darks and the lights particularly will jump out. They'll be stronger when you half close your eyes and you're staring at that reference picture. It cuts out the kind of middle tones. When I'm half close my eyes looking at this, I can see 
real darks here, obviously the center of the donut and darks here. And then I can, my eyes picking up the highlight around these sections. So it does help. Also sit back from your work, don't get dragged into the page. So every now and again, you just readjust your posture, move your move back, don't get sucked in. So you can see the whole thing. Don't just stare all the time at that section you're working on. Sit back and take a look at the whole thing. Pop my glasses back on. Talking about seeing the whole thing. It helps if I put my glasses on. Really nice and dark. Now you've got more darks on, you can compare darks with darks to see whether, to me, this section here of the pink, just talking about the pink, this section at the back is the darkest. This is fairly dark around here. There's a couple of areas over this side. I'm just gonna make a bit darker as I'm talking about it, around there. And then the next, almost equal to that, is this side here, as that donut curves towards the center. So taking that carmine again, strengthening the pink in those areas of shadow. And suddenly, this bit's quite exciting actually. It's a good point in the process where adding these darker pinks suddenly makes it get that shape. And you can see the curve. Oops, I've gone a little bit heavy there as I'm chatting. I'm just gonna take my base pink and try and soften that mark. I went a bit too hard. Keep that circular motion to keep the smoothness, remember, of the surface. And watch, watch carefully where this dark color starts to lighten as you come out of that dip. So again, around midway, start easing up a little bit so you get that change in value. I'm a little bit annoyed with myself because over this side, I went a bit too dark. I'm gonna to try to lift a bit out with my eraser. Now erasers won't remove all of the color, but you can see, if you can see on the tip there, it has picked up some pink. I went a bit too mad with my rose around this highlight section. So I'm just gonna lift a bit of it out. The other thing you could use is turpentine which you use with oil paints. Um, these pencils that I'm using are oil-based color pencils. So turpentine would lift it, would turn it to liquid. And you could also use with oil-based, such as the polychromos pencils, turpentine to turn it to paint, to do your blending. But I find it can lift off too much of the pencil, which is why I just use a white or a cream over the top and burnish rather than use that. But it is something that you can and some people like to use. It just melts the oil. And you can get odorless turpentine now, so you don't have to have the smelly ones. But do check whether your pencils are wax or oil based. There we go. So it's starting to get that curve now. Can you see that? Where we've got the shadow area. Keeping it light this side, but I just want a little bit more pink. Go back to my rose, just to add a bit more color to the right hand side.
what I'm going to do is leave the sprinkles because you're all more than capable of filling in your sprinkles yourself. Um, I'm going to concentrate more on the textured side of the donut in a little while. Um, but we haven't finished with the icing. So I'll give you a little moment to finish off rendering your shadow areas and adding your darker pinks. We're going to add a bit of grey. to get even more definition between the dark and the lights. I love doing these. I should do more color pencil tutorials, I think. I do them now and again. We've done a puffin. Um, what else have we done? A lizard, a chameleon on black paper. That's good fun to do, working on black paper with your color pencils. And remember, you can get those um, back copies of the lessons if you've missed any and you fancy doing them. Most of them I've now put on my on demand section. And I know Helen's just she had a, a Christmas voucher and has just ordered three of them. Helen, not Helen Walker, the new Helen. So if you're bored during this lockdown, you know where to go. Okay, so your grey, guys, that I mentioned, this is Payne's grey. I'm going to add a little bit of grey, very lightly. You don't want to go too strong. It's going to change that pink a little bit. It will give it a kind of purpley tone because Payne's grey has blue in it. If you haven't got Payne's grey, use Indigo. That's another good option. I've got Indigo up here. That will give you, where's my indigo? There's dark, dark indigo will give you the same thing. In fact, the dark indigo will give it more of a violet because obviously it's mixing with the pink. So paint gray or indigo. Indigo is the darkest blue. Over that shadow side and in that middle section, right as it curls over, just on that edge, the edge of the icing before it topples over. Let's add in a little bit more shadow, a coolness. Shadows tend to be a cool color. It's a blue based color, not a yellow warm based color which is why blue indigo works well, or the gray, because it's a blue based gray. And that's really emphasizing the contours and the shade shading. How are we doing? We've got about half an hour. So I'll just give you a moment on finishing your pink, but you can finish it later. Really important that I show you the bite section and we can quite quickly fill in the, the hole in the middle. That's not hard to do. So, um, and then a bit of shadow. I'm just gonna top up my coffee and we'll get cracking. I would have another break, but time is against us, so um, we'll keep going. So 
make sure it's still recording. Excellent. OK, let's get the hole done in the middle and we're going to use the same colours in here, but with the addition of more Van Dyke brown um, or Walnut brown in the middle, dark brown, whichever one you've got. But we start, remember, with the umber. So back to the beginning again. Where's my umber gone? Into this hole in the middle. Gently shading. I am thinking about the curve of the donut. So although I'm doing circular motions, I'm kind of following around that curve. And we're going to take this base layer like we did before, all the way around. On this left hand side, if I bring my donut back from before, just in here, we want to leave a light area. Remember the lights coming from here? So it's catching here and it's catching there. So just in there, just leave a little bit of the paper showing for now. Just on that curve. And then come down, down, down into the hole. Now, of course, as it goes down, it gets darker as we go down this center of our donut. Let's get a nice coating of the raw umber first. Go around your sprinkles if you've got any sprinkles on the edge. And then into our terracotta. Bring in that lovely orange glow to the dough over the top of our raw umber. I want you to press a little more firmly around the edge of the icing. And then ease off as you come down. down to that center, into the shadow. Just going around my sprinkles, hundreds and thousands. Still leaving that area of light on the left-hand side. You'll be pleased to know the bite section is not as hard as it looks. Putting more pressure as I come down along this edge. We'll be going down the hole. We're then going to go over the top with our brown. This time we're going to start down in the depths of the darkest, darkest bit of this picture, the shadows, right down the middle of our donut. Just keep circling, don't push even, a nice even pressure. But remember, if you push too hard, you'll make it shine. Just keep layering over and over and over circling over and over the same spot with the same pressure. And then I'm coming to the top, around that edge, because what's happening, the ice in itself, as we had over here, is cast in its own shadow because it's raised off the surface of the donut. So we're adding some of that brown around the top edge. And then remember what we did before, gently, gently lift up the pressure and bring the brown, ease off the gas. 
Now we've still got this highlight section. We need to get a bit of color on that. I'm gonna use the um, ochre, that yellowy tone in that gap. I don't want white paper. I just want a bit more of a yellowy tone and probably my yellow as well over the top, like I did over here. Just a little bit of yellow and the ochre. Just switch between the two. Just a bit of a highlight over that corner. I'm going back to my terracotta now and just giving it another layer. As I looked up at the screen, I'm quite fortunate because I'm filming this for you guys. I get to see it on the big screen. I've got a 50 inch screen in the studio and I get to see my donut on a huge scale and also the tones that you can see. So I just needed to add a little bit more terracotta in that middle. And just like before, Payne's Grey in the shadow. So we really want to take this dark, as dark as we can. We don't use black. I don't use black. You can if you want to, but I don't like black. So I'm just going to take the Payne's Grey into that middle section. Tight, tight circle for the dark, darkest section of our donut in that big, deep shadow in the middle. Suddenly, you can see how this sense of forms really coming together. I'm gonna to take a little bit of this gray again over the brown at the top as well. Mainly focusing in that core center. Easing up as you come out. I'm going to take my terracotta back over the top. Over, over the Payne's Grey and back up. Hey, we have a hole in our donut. Just adding a bit more colour to the dough with the terracotta, looking up at my screen. Now, if you wanted to render this bit, I would take a light brown, the lightest brown that you've got and use that. So I'm using the ochre to render the colors together, to burnish, not the white, because it's a very dark area of the painting, the drawing, painting, drawing, same thing. There we go. And of course, you'll come to add your sprinkles to these ones falling down the edge. I'm just going to do a couple quickly. Don't forget, guys, when you do fill in your sprinkles on this side, don't forget about the shadows to make it look three dimensional. Okay, then, final hurdle. We've got 20 minutes. We can do this. I'm going to take, oh, sorry, just move my chair. I'm going to take the cream and I'm going to take the cream all over the bite, every bit of it. Now, I'm changing directions. Anyone noticed? I'm not doing circles anymore. For this section, it's not smooth, it's jagged. And the bite, the tear, is on a slight diagonal, actually. So not dead horizontal, just up on a tilt. So it's not so important with the cream. We're just getting a base colour on at this stage. But when we come into the other colours, our direction and our type of stroke is changed because we want to show the layers and the tears in the dough. 
So just a it's really bad TV, this bit, putting cream on white. Okay, now I'm going to take my ochre or your, you could use your raw umber. I want to use the ochre. It's just a bit yellow, more yellowy than the raw umber. And I'm going to shade in, starting at the edge of the icing. And I'm still going to maintain a side to side. Up here, it's quite small and dense and dark. So I'm keeping my movement tight as I come around the edge of the icing with this golden color. Around the edge. Now comes the fun bit. We're going to create, using this slight angle, so from here to here, from four o'clock to 10 o'clock angle, but we're just going to take a seesaw motion and create these jagged lines, random patterns in the flesh of the dough. So there's up and down, but my pencil is following that trajectory. That's a big word. And then there's other areas where I'm going to just put little circles of this color. Look at your reference photo, use that as your guide. Random shapes, divots, knobbly bits. And what we're putting in to show the texture, as I've said earlier, to show texture, we need to show dark and light. So we're creating shadows within the dough that's been torn apart to give it a different texture to the surface of our donut. So some of it, as I say, is just random shapes. Some of them are joined together like here where I've gone a zigzag. I'm gonna come away from the top of the donut, zigzagging again. And then stop and break the line and start again somewhere else. There's not much smooth surface. There's no, there's, there's divots and little holes. You can make smaller marks. Some of them are tiny like air bubbles within the dough itself. So tiny marks, bigger marks, really mix up the shapes that you're creating some circles, but they're all following that shape towards, going towards from the edge towards the center of the donut. Now around this outer edge that's left from the bite, you wanna press harder, go a little bit darker where it meets the table. So come around that bottom edge around the left hand side so just keep going until you've filled lots of the white paper with your marks I'm going to go a quite a big hole up here I can see in the reference photo so I'm going to make a big mark there Coming down. Okay, along this bit here where the, the um, piece has been taken out, it's like a honeycomb shape. When you really zoom in, it's like a bee's honeycomb. This side is lighter again. This side is dark because the light can't get to it. This side's a bit lighter. And you can't see the detail so much because it's facing away from us. So I'm just gonna use a circular motion over here to create lighter, less pressure on that pencil, divots. A little bit dark along that edge where it meets the icing. I 
I can't wait to see your finished work at the end. It's always where I start getting excited. If you're on Facebook later, or if your mum's on Facebook for the kids that are joining in, and you want to share your work, I'll post mine if you post yours. How's that? <laughs> and show off what you've done. So we've created all those layers just with this colour. Now we need to make them darker. This is where we really show that there's holes in that donut. So I want you to take your brown, dark brown, and we're gonna choose some of these shapes that we've made and go into them to darken them. Put a dark line and then lift the pressure off and shade out. Really lift that pressure off. So we're creating divots, shadows, and then softly, softly, with your dark brown, shade out from that dark. Okay, we'll go again, just find, we're not gonna put, oops, we're not gonna put them everywhere. But in the darkest bubbles and segments of that donut. My pencil slipped then, did you see that? See if I can get rid of that. So the darkest brown, creating the darkest shadows, particularly down this bottom segment, you can see there's more holes, more shadows within the holes. And that's what's going to show this texture. It's the way light hits an object, whatever it may be, you'll always get a highlight before a shadow. So the light hits the edge and then there's the shadow underneath. It's the same with waves in the sea. Okay, we want terracotta next, but I can't find where I've put mine. Oh, here it is. So I'm adding a bit more orangey tone, that lovely golden colour over the top just like we did when we layered this size, but this time we're just adding it to those areas of colour that we've put down with our ochre or our raw umber. Again, these orangey colours are based in these shadow segments. They're not all over it. They're within these crevices within the donut. Coming around that edge where it meets the icing. Just nice and lightly. Let that pencil dance around. Don't overthink it. It's a very random, a set of random shapes that we're creating. And that sense of texture that illusion that it creates. I'm going to go back to the raw umber. I just feel that my donut flesh needs a bit more colour. It's a bit too light. So where we put the cream all over, really, really softly, I'm just going to take the raw umber over the whole thing. Just needs toning down. It's too bright. It's not donut enough coloured for me. So just every now and again, I'm going to leave a section of cream here and there as a highlight. Just give that a little bit more colour to it, but let some of the cream show through. And on the left hand side of the bite as well. Going 
going a little bit stronger again around the edge of the ice in. That's good. I'm just going to take a little bit more brown and make some of these pockets within the donut a bit bigger. Just looking back, sitting back from my work, observing, comparing it to the reference photo and looking where I can make, where I need to make some changes. Just making some of those a bit darker, a bit bigger. Switch between your colors, see what color is missing from your work and then just emphasize it. Go back in. We've added more color to the whole flesh now. So you want to adjust your shadow colors as well to keep it in balance. Oops, my battery's dying on my iPad. Lucky we're nearly done. This is a very, very old iPad. It's been through the wars. It's helped me create hundreds and hundreds of paintings over the years. Time for an update. There we go. I just wanna go around this section where the bite is, where it meets the icing. Just add in a little bit more value with my ochre. around the edge of the donut again. That sense of texture is amazing, isn't it? And it's just through some simple marks, just observation of, and thinking about how light hits an object. And that's why texture exists. Without light, it wouldn't be there. We couldn't see it. So to finish off, guys, is just the shadow. And this is what's gonna ground the whole thing to our paper and give it that sense of realism. And we want our Payne's Gray, that's indigo, Payne's Gray. You can just do it with Payne's Gray or you can mix your grays and use a lighter one. Start with the Payne's Gray. Shadows are always darkest, closest to the object. And you can see that really clearly in this reference picture, particularly the shadow on this side where the bite is. So we're gonna take that Payne's Gray right into the shapes, the base of that donut where it's touching the surface. And this time I will let you put a nice even pressure down on that pencil to get that dark line in place. And then easing up the pressure straight away, coming out. Now there's no shadow this side because we can't see that. The shadow's here. This side we can't see the base where it's touching. So just come up to that edge and back along the donut. And then really ease up, just shade in really gently. So you don't want to see a change from that dark as it comes light. So you're going to hard, medium pressure to light pressure. Really lift that pencil away and lightly, lightly shade as you come back from that darkest shadow. As I say, the shadow is always darkest close to the object. I keep looking up at the screen. If you can see me looking up, I'm not looking at you guys. I'm just looking at the screen. <laughs> there we go. And the same the other side. Now look where the shadow starts. It's where we want it darkest again, under that edge where the donut's actually touching the work surface, the table or 
or the plate. Nice and dark. As we come round towards that bite, just ease off. The donut's actually lifted in the photo there. And we can represent that by leaving a gap just here. Just leave a little gap as that donut lifts from the surface. Fairly strong along that edge. Look at the shape that it's cast in. It's coming around here. Let me bring the other one back. You can see this shape of the donut. So easing up again as we come out. I'm not doing a circular stroke now. I'm using a very small side to side. Very gentle, softly, and then pushing harder as you go back towards the donut. And then from the donut, hard, and then ease up as you come away. And that shadow fades out as it comes away and it stops casting a shadow. Excuse my phone, that's probably my daughter. Some of you may have seen me share some um, pictures of candles recently. Um, my daughter's decided to follow in the family trait like me and get out of corporate world and follow her passion, which is yoga and meditation and all those things. And um, she's creating our own range of candles. So she's probably messaged me something to do with her candles. She's done really well. She launched in September and she's had a superb Christmas and sales are still good. So she's doing something right. They're crystal infused candles, beautiful. I would say that I'm her mum. Okay, so I'm just working that shadow. So I get that change until it fades out as we come away from the object. And you see how that's suddenly grounded. Just working back over it. Remember what I said about layers and building up layers. Sometimes if this donut was on a really shiny surface, I've done it again, I've distracted myself and made a boo-boo. A if it was a really shiny surface, you could, you could show that by adding pink from the donut into the shadow. So if you wanted to and you want to make it look like it's on a highly polished surface, just add a bit of pink over your grey into the shadow because a really shiny surface is acting more like a mirror, isn't it? So you'd get some color as well as just a shadow. But that's a choice that you can make. It's obviously not in the reference photo. So I didn't do that last time, but I just thought I'd mention it as an option. So I'm gonna come round to that edge now, that lightest edge, really, really softly, have that pencil tilted over as we fade out to nothing. And then you've got your final bits. Obviously you've still got some bits to finish off in your paintings, in your drawings, finishing your sprinkles, unless you've sped ahead. And then you would take time just to go back over it Look to see if there's any colours you want to intensify. Looking at mine, I'm going to compare it with the one I did previously. It's bigger. <laughs> I need a bit more orange. So I would intensify the um, terracotta in the base. And you can just make those adjustments. And sometimes it's good to look at it the next day with fresh eyes and compare it to your reference photo and see if there's any areas that you want to 
make those colors stronger. The, the difference between your shadows and your lights are what's gonna give it that shape and that realism to your work.